Good morning and welcome to our live event here in the Facebook group, Women Healing from Emotional Abuse with Power, Passion and Pleasure, or on YouTube if you're watching this on YouTube as well. My name is Ailsa Kepi and I'm curator of the group as well as I have a coaching practice, which you can find out more about me at pleasureforhealth.com, where I deal with relationships um, and all issues to do with trauma, relationships, desire, sexuality, um, intimacy, all sorts of fun things. And today I have an important topic that has come to me because of the amazing times that we are living in. And um, I don't mean that completely sarcastically, we do live in amazing times. We are at the in end of an era. We are in a time of co-creating or having the potential to co-create a new reality, a new future for the human race. So on a meta view, on a big picture, that is what we're dealing with. And so overarching, my goal is to really help us to see how we can stay grounded, how we can stay present, how we can stay um, positive about what's possible for us as, you know, as personal uh, survivors of trauma or emotional abuse, or how we can actually move forward and offer our gifts to the world and our perspectives. So this particular talk, I'm speaking to women that have had emotional abuse. And I speak to this group particularly not because, you know, there aren't other people that experience abuse or there's not other groups that are important, but because we have a unique perspective. After having experienced emotional abuse, we have this unique perspective and this opportunity to really point out where and why this is happening in other places. So if you have you know, if you're at a certain point in your journey and you're able to actually reflect on how you, you know, how you maybe fell into being the victim of emotional abuse, you know, myself, I have a perspective now where I can clearly see the manipulation, the coercion, the gaslighting, um, the trauma bonding, the codependency, all of these aspects that are really driving that um, that abuse relationship. And I can start seeing that, you know, when I start falling into it again, or when I see it in friends or family or, you know, in my clients, I can actually, you know, point to it and say, there's those, there are those patterns again, let's face them and look at them head on. And so we have this unique perspective, having gone through these abusive situations. And typically, having had enough strength to sort of get through the initial um, escape, if you will, and started to do this self-work, of which, if you're interested, I do have programs that help you work through all of those long-term effects of emotional abuse and, you know, lack of confidence and self-esteem, all those types of things. But once we get to a certain point, we have this unique perspective of being able to say, aha, I see where that the gaslighting is happening. I can see where someone's being emotionally abused. I can I can see it clearly. I can sense in my own body when it's happening to me. And this is what I wanted to bring out because this is an important um, gift that we have as women that have had this type of abuse is that we can actually point out, hey, that's happening over here and here and here, even in a patriarchal culture, in our society, in our churches, in our religious groups, and, um, you know, in our, in our workplace, it, you know, so many arenas where emotional and psychological abuse is actually happening all the time, that it's important that we, that we at least recognize and also perhaps start to speak up and start to actually act on some of this. So, Let's put forward a couple of terms that we may or may not be familiar with that have to do with emotional abuse and the effects of emotional abuse. So one is gaslighting. You've probably heard that term um, flung around recently. It's becoming more well known. It's basically, gaslighting is basically a term that is used to describe the idea of somebody else putting forth a false narrative to you that leads you to doubt your own perspective on things. 
So I had this a lot in my relationship. My ex would deny, you know, I'd say, oh, I remember this happening. And he'd be like, no, 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 that didn't happen like that. Here's what happened. And he would tell me his narrative, which was different than mine, and be very sure that his narrative was correct. And he would put that forward. And, you know, I, because I tend to be very um, amenable to other people's ideas, which, you know, got me in trouble for a long time. I would listen to his narrative and be like, well, he must be right. You know, I must be wrong. And so I would take that on as something, you know, maybe maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm misremembering. Maybe, yeah. And, and it would lead to a lot of confusion, a lot of self-doubt, <clears throat> a lot of like kind of despair even because I wasn't sure, you know, I just couldn't. I was like, well, I, I'm not going to even try to remember anything. I'm not going to have a narrative. <laughs> I'm just going to exist, you know. And so that's a really interesting perspective to have. So gaslighting is one of the things that comes up. And I called this video, why are we getting triggered so hard right now? Is because if we've been through this before um, and, you know, then other people come along that are also gaslighting us. Let's say you work for a boss and they tell you, oh, no, no, you didn't, you forgot to do that, you know, task yesterday. Um, and you, you're you sure you did it, but, you know, your boss is so sure you didn't and you can't find the evidence and so therefore you kind of have to go along with. And you get more and more triggered and confused because of all these different aspects. And I'm not going to go into it too deeply because I know it's a very divisive issue, but I just want those of you who are open to this idea to realize that in the world today, our figures of authority and the people that have power, so this is often around the inequality of power in relationships. So you put who you want in those positions of power and ask yourselves if you feel the same type of gaslighting that is going on with our authority figures in the world today and whether that is causing you to have a really high stress response to get depressed, to give up, to um, be more afraid. Because some of these things, and see if that feels like how it felt to be emotionally abused. Because to me, there's a really similar feeling and I don't think that I'm alone in that. So if you are also feeling that and it's triggering you to a, maybe what you would think of as, why am I getting so triggered by that news report or so triggered by that person down the road that said this to me? Well, it could be because you are sensitized to this type of treatment because of the experiences of emotional abuse that you've been through in your personal relationships. So now we look at our social, cultural relationships, those positions of power may be using those same type of techniques and we are sensitized to that. And so I'm just going to say that, you know, you may not be wrong. You may not be wrong. What you're feeling is possibly true. And so we need to look at that as a serious thing because this is part of our healing. Part of our gift of having gone through all this abuse is that we can use our experience to understand and move forward and help people to not have that again and not be caught in these cycles of abuse. So I just put it out there. Um, let's look at something like coercion which is also something that comes up in emotionally abusive relationships when someone persuades you to do something and forces or threatens you to do that. You know, you have to, you know, make my dinner by 5 p.m. or I'm going to, you know, um, not give you your allowance for the week. You know, this is something I actually hear from women. <laughs> you know, I'm not making this shit up. So, you know, you need to tell me before you go out for a walk, or, you know, I'm not going to let you out for a week. This is also something I've heard, uh, you know, as well. These, this is not a made-up scenario. So people have coercion, and this is part of emotional and psychological abuse. If you are threatened with, you know, a, a bad consequence, if you don't do what someone says, you know, a bully could say, um, you give me your lunch money or I'm going to beat you up. These are obvious things. And again, I would say... 
where in our world today are we feeling that coercion and how is that triggering us? Because again, I can guarantee that we are feeling some heightened level of anxiety because this coercion is coming up in our culture, in our societies, from people in, in positions of power or just institutions of power that are using these coercive techniques on us. And we are feeling them. Again, because we've experienced this type of abuse, we are sensitized. We feel it more strongly and we start to respond in a way of, you know, what our typical response is, which often is to, you know, try to placate, to try to make them happy, <clears throat> to try not to rock the boat, to walk on eggshells. All of these uh, responses that we may have learned, and let me just say, these are often survival responses. So there is no judgment on anyone that uses you know, if you have to walk on eggshells in order to stay alive, then walk on friggin' eggshells. <laughs> you know, like, I'm not telling you to, you know, sometimes you stand up to a narcissist, you stand up to the power structures that be, you're not going to be treated well. But however, in these safe arenas, these places where we can talk about this, let's talk about the fact that we are walking on eggshells and we are indeed afraid for our own survival and that we are being triggered in these ways to respond as a victim um, to emotional abuse. So let's be really clear about what's happening. We may have to respond in a certain way in order to survive, but let's be really clear about what's happening. That is the first stage in actually getting out of these positions of abuse and you know, finding our own power so that these people don't have, it, have power over us. And that we're not afraid to do our own thing. So coercion is another thing, another tactic that you may be feeling a lot of right now. Trauma bonding. Let's talk about trauma bonding. This comes up a lot and it is so relevant to, um, you know, what happens. Trauma bonding, um, you know, could be defined in a few ways, but it's kind of when we develop sympathy or empathy for our abuser. So, you know, in the Stockholm Syndrome version of trauma bonding, you know, um, hostages developed this bond with their captors because they started to feel sympathetic, like they were, <clears throat> they were together for like a few days or a week or something, I think. And they, you know, the, the captors would feed them and then talk to them and then point a gun at them and then be nice, you know, let them go to the bathroom and then tell them to sit down and don't move. Like... It was this back and forth between abuse and kind of feeling remorse or feeling some kind of that, you know, and so we feel we get really connected because now again, our survival is triggered to make, to be with this person. And so we get bonded to this person through this type of, um, you know, back and forth with uh, an abusive person. We begin to rationalize their actions and um, to become dependent on them, you know, we are dependent on them. So again, think bigger picture. Who are we dependent on? What institutions are we dependent on? And are these institutions having a similar effect on us um, in that way of, oh, here's some crumbs. Now do this while I, you know, while I um, coerce or threaten you. Oh, here's some more money. Oh, here, I'm threatening you, right? So we want to actually ask ourselves, is this feeling a similar type of back and forth that we could, as, you know, survivors of emotional abuse, we recognize. We recognize this behavior. So, you know, it all comes from, like I said, this unequal power balance. And, you know, we're fearful to challenge anything in the moment, but we recognize in our body that this feels similar to maybe what we have felt in an abusive relationship before this type of trauma bonding this back and forth stuff and so this type of you know when we start rationalizing what's happening you know oh well they must be doing it because you know they're lonely they must be doing it because it's for the greater good they must be doing it because they're you know they're working so hard and you know they're just tired they must be doing it because we are in a state of emergency and we need to save the human race like whatever the reason is we need to take a step back and look at whether there is a rationalization for what's going on that we are making that 
falls under the same type of behavior that we might have noticed with ourselves in this type of trauma bonding. So I just picked out three examples of, you know, things that would trigger us, especially having been through emotional abuse. Many of us have been through it many times, many different type of, types of relationships. And these types of re- abusive relationships have led us to be extremely aware of these types of behavior. So if you're feeling anxious, if you're feeling like you're walking on eggshells, if you're feeling isolated, if you're feeling that you can't talk to anyone, that you can't really share how you feel, that you're doubting your own sense of reality, that you can't have your own intuition, ask yourself if, you know, the current events in the world are also triggering us as well. And so we're having like a double layer of triggers perhaps in your life right now, especially if you still have abusive people in your life. You know, sometimes it's your mom, your kids, your your ex-partner is still involved, you know, with parenting or whatever. Uh, your boss, you may be still dealing with narcissistic people or manipulative or abusers in some of your personal relationships. And you may also notice that it seems to be ramping up like you're just getting, you know, all the time stressed. So this is no wonder because we're actually living in times where we are having that on many levels. We're having it on personal level. We're having it on this meta level. Um, You know, if we look at whole cultures and societies and countries and what's being done today. And so this is just, you know, um, an understanding that I came to that like, you know, I'm feeling a lot like I used to feel when I was in an abusive relationship and I'm not anymore, but it feels the same way When I go out in the world now or when I read the news or when I do anything, I feel like I'm back in that place. So if that's you, you know, just understand that it that you are not wrong, that your intuition can be true. And if you need to connect with other women, other people that are in this situation that you can relate to, um, please do join. If you're not already in my Facebook group, Women Healing from Emotional Abuse with Power, Passion and Pleasure. We don't discuss political things in this group, but I'm just bringing that awareness that there are many levels to emotional abuse that may be adding to our stress load at the moment. And, you know, I'm not going to take it any further than that. I also have individual coaching and I provide support and working through and transformation of a lot of this so that we can actually start growing who we are, what we stand for, what are our values. How do we find that empowerment, that joy in life, that vision that we have for a humanity that actually cares about each other, that is based on some of our real empathy and caring and kindness? So if you're interested in working with me um, and you have a dream and a vision and you want to get there on a personal and a meta level, both of those do reach out to me at www.ailsakepi.com forward slash apply book a call with me. Let's talk about it. Um, because this could be your, this could be your time. If you are one of those people that's feeling what's going on right now, we need to get together and we need to start strengthening each other. We need to be working together. You know, I think it was the Dalai Lama that said women of the Western world are the ones that are going to save the world because we have been through this experience. We have come through it we have the resources and the time and the you know typically we have the possibility of doing some of this work and we have the potential to really reach an audience and to help each other come together with this um you know overthrow of you know uh unhealthy power structures we have that capability to do that so for ourselves, in our own lives, and for a larger picture. It's important that we do this work. So if you're feeling, you know, I always recommend starting with our own story, start with our own um, confidence and our own ability to be um, to be in our own values, to be in integrity. We need to start there, and then we need to find small groups of pe- like-minded people, and then we need to branch out and actually create a culture, create a community, uh, create a world 
that we want to live in that is not based on coercion and gaslighting and trauma bonding and abuse. We want to create a world that's um, based on kindness and caring, compassion, all of those things, on love. So, you know, it's interesting to notice that um, all these types of abuse are very common right now. You know, there's like positive coercion of like the grooming, you know, the you know oh you're so beautiful you you're such a great person you do this thing really well you know you're helping humanity like there's that kind of grooming aspect there's just kind of continua continual like nagging it might come across as nagging in personal life it might come across as propaganda in a meta view um where there might be physical persuasion there's like you can mix with all these people you can do this if you are following our protocols and if you treat me right, I'll, you know, I'll love on you or whatever in personal relationships. You can see the dynamics of how this works. Um, we might also get to the point in negative um, abuse where there's threats and, you know, threats of violence, threats of isolation, you know, all of these things. So all of these are just exactly similar to what we are aware of as women that have gone through emotionally abusive relationships. So we have a calling here we have a responsibility to do our work to do our own work so that we can actually access our own strength and intuition and you know i can't say what the right thing to do in your relationship is i can't tell you what the right thing to do in the world is but i know and i absolutely know this that if we work and transform ourselves and that we find an integrity, a sense of integrity in our within our values, our feelings, our thoughts, our actions, we can change the world. One person at a time, perhaps. I work with clients. Sometimes it's one-on-one. -on -one, sometimes a group. Sometimes I get to speak to all of you at once. And that's really awesome. We can change things, you know, one step at a time. We need to support each other. We need to work together. So, like I said, reach out. Um, join in me in one of my communities, work with me one-on-one -on -one or, you know, in one of my workshops. I am so happy to, um, you know, be supportive of you to transform to be your best self because we all need to help each other have as much power uh, as we need in order to have as much individual freedoms and rights as we can because that diversity is how we strengthen ourselves as a human population. So I think that sums up my message for today. Uh, if this was really triggering for you, I'm sorry that it was triggering. I do think it's important to consider. So if you want to go back and listen again and just see if you can take it in, notice the changes, disagree with me if you want, put it in the comments. I'm open to that disagreement and dissent and conversation is a good thing. We want to actually encourage people to say, hey, that doesn't sound okay. And then we talk about it. We don't have to um, turn away from each other because we disagree. So I hope that there's something here for you today on this Saturday morning and uh, please do keep in touch.